Hello, you absolute legends. As speedrunners, our goal is simple. Beat the game or level as fast as possible. In theory, you'd think that players would use any means necessary to achieve this goal. But in reality, the manner in which speedrunners beat games quickly is extremely important and differs from person to person. Some people are willing to do whatever it takes to achieve the quickest time, while others will restrict themselves to specific strategies, even if it means ultimately going slower. This is one of the main reasons that most games have multiple categories available to compete in, with each category giving different strategic limitations. At the end of the day, it all boils down to what the speedrunner has the most enjoyment doing. A great example of how different preferences and playstyles can cause a split is Mario Kart 64, but there are two completely separate rankings for each course. One that allows for the use of shortcuts, and one that bans shortcuts completely. Some players prefer to focus on the different glitches and skips that are possible within the game, and some players prefer to focus purely on the driving aspect alone. It really all just comes down to personal preference. Sometimes when a new strategy or technique is discovered, it is met with universal praise. This could be because it skipped a difficult part of the game, or because it decreased the amount of luck required. Maybe it just made the game more enjoyable to play. Other times, a new strategy or technique can be met with disappointment, frustration, and anger. In rare cases, new strategies can be banned outright because they completely destroy any enjoyment from playing the game. A great example of this was the pause buffer strategy that was found in The World Is Not Enough. With constant pausing, it was possible to get much lower times, but the technique is so monotonous it was barred from use, as it completely ruined any fun runners may have had playing the game. New discoveries can also create brand new categories to compete in. Speedrunning for Super Mario 64 originally began with two categories. 70 star, which is the minimum amount of stars you need to complete the game in normal play, and 120 star, which requires getting every star in the game. When new glitches were discovered allowing players to complete the game with 16 stars, some players continued to focus on the older categories, while some moved on to the newer strategy. Thus, a new category was born. Eventually, when strategies were found that enabled players to beat the game with one or even zero stars, two more categories were created. Now, Super Mario 64 has five main categories that people compete in, and certain players tend to stick to the categories that they prefer. There is also one other outcome that can occur when a new strategy is discovered, which is the entire point of this video. In 2002, a new strategy in GoldenEye was found that was met with heavy disapproval. It wasn't a strategy that could be banned or made into a new category either. It led to many players simply quitting the game, including myself for many years. I'm talking of course about Lookdown, which is what GoldenEye speedrunners call the act of looking at the ground in order to run faster. The story of how this discovery came to be is really interesting and traces back to the entrance of one John Kalita, who joined the GoldenEye World Record forums under the username Supernova. On July 22nd, 2002, John made his very first post. It was a simple post, only containing three times. 115, 157, 157. He didn't mention the level, but at the same time, John had updated his times page to reflect these times on the level streets. The world records on streets at the time were 115, 158, 158. So the times that Kalita was claiming instantly drew attention. As it turns out though, he had made a mistake. As confirmed in his second post, his real times were 115, 158 and 158 tying each of the current world records. He also mentioned something in that post that flew completely under the radar. He said, I use 1.1 with mini cruise control, no auto aim, 
and I strafe looking down to where I can barely see the next turn or objective. It seemed like no one noticed this extremely important comment when it was made. Instead, people were focused on requesting proof for times that he was claiming. Kalita's writing style was completely insane, as highlighted by his third ever post in response to requests for proof. This post can be deciphered, but it's obviously outside of the norm, and the next two replies summed up the general atmosphere. It seemed like there was always something off about Kalita's replies. When prompted for his real name, he responded, John Kalita, Burbank, Illinois, 5947, 6 foot, blonde, golden eye player. If true, Kalita would have been 55 years old at the time, by far the oldest person to have ever been involved with the community. This definitely explains the difference in communication style, and Kalita even mentioned that his posts on these forums were his very first online posts. On the 9th of August 2002, a topic was created titled John Kalita. Here, more users requested proof for his insane streets times. In the topic, a classic old school runner by the name of Peter Osterland asked Kalita exactly what he was doing to achieve these times. Kalita's reply listed off his general strategy, and again mentioned the fact that he looked down. This time, someone noticed. The webmaster Derek Clark asked, What's this business of looking down? You strafe looking at the floor? An explanation, please. Kalita replied, About looking down, when Perfect Dark came out, I read a walkthrough by Marshmallow, who advised, put your nose down to the grindstone and haul ass. Been doing it ever since, sure it seems faster. When I'm strafing, at the very top of the screen, I want to see the bottom of my next turn or objective. Put your nose down means speed. Now, the technique was clear. But funnily enough, no one tried it. That is, of course, until the absolute legend Brian Bossart tested it out just over two weeks later. On August 27th, Brian created a topic titled, Looking Down on Missions, where he stated, I've been messing around with Street's agent, and I think if you look down for most of the mission, it saves a hell of a lot of time. I think this is what John Kalita is doing to get his times, so this could be a huge discovery if this is what he did. The same day that Brian made this topic, all three of the street's world records were broken, taking them down to 114, 157, 157. The reason Lookdown is effective is because the Nintendo 64 has difficulty running Goldeneye at a smooth 30 frames per second. It just so happens that Bond's running speed is affected greatly by the frame rate, so a higher frame rate means that Bond will run faster. Looking at the ground instead of the environment allows the game to render less total polygons, which greatly increases the frame rate. So essentially, looking down is almost always optimal when speedrunning Goldeneye, giving Bond a very small speed boost. The boost is extremely slight, saving approximately one second for every minute of looking down, so it's understandable that this wasn't realized immediately. And from Kalita's own admission, this technique was born from taking an expression too literally rather than from any logical conclusion. The reaction to this new technique was extremely mixed, with a lot of the older players showing their frustrations. Brian Yass, who was very prolific in that time, said, this may be a huge discovery, but if everyone starts looking down every run to get that 0.5 second advantage, then I will stop playing Goldeneye, because that really takes all the fun out of the game. The webmaster Derek Clark simply stated, I quit. Wouter Janssen showed his disappointment, as did Matthijs Tenham, 
who is another classic old school player. Sterling Neblett, one of the greatest champions of all time, was extremely upset with Lookdown. And of course, there was myself. Lookdown was a massive blow for me that caused me to leave Goldeneye entirely and move over to Perfect Dark. I wouldn't return to Goldeneye for another 10 years. A lot of these older players either stopped entirely or barely played Goldeneye after Lookdown was discovered. Playing the game while looking at the ground is definitely not something that everyone can enjoy. And a technique like this is essentially too hard to separate into a distinct category. So those players who didn't want to look down basically had nowhere to go, and were forced to move on from the game. As history has shown, GoldenEye speedrunning did survive, and the new strategy was spearheaded by legendary players such as Brian Bossart and Walter Janssen. Over the years, Lookdown has become less of an area of contention and has become much more accepted by both speedrunners and the general public. I do think it was close to swinging the other way. If the amount of Lookdown required to gain the advantage was more severe, it definitely could have destroyed the game's ultimate popularity. And perhaps, if Lookdown was not a technique that was advantageous, GoldenEye speedrunning may even be more popular than it is today. I'm really curious how long it would have taken to discover Lookdown if John Kalita hadn't shown up with this technique. It definitely would have been found at some point, but who knows how many years it would have taken, as looking at the ground is definitely not at all intuitive. One thing is for certain though. Lookdown has had a tremendous impact on the game, and has massively shaped the community. Perhaps, Lookdown has given the game character, and helps distinguish it from other first-person shooters. Lookdown always draws questions and attention from casual viewers. And maybe, that is a good thing. Sadly, John Kalita passed away in 2012, at the young age of 65. But his legacy and impact on this small community of speedrunners will continue to live on. He will always be remembered as an absolute legend.